So welcome everyone and welcome to Singapore. My name is Imran. We'll be starting very, very shortly. All right, uh, Voyagers, hello and welcome to Singapore. My name is Imran and thank you for joining me today, uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are uh, located. Uh, <clears throat> I will be your host today and we have an exciting walk. Even though it's a short walk, it's gonna be packed with many different things, food, architecture, uh, as well as some amazing, amazing uh, craftsmanship in the Chinese temple. Now, before I begin, I just want to mention uh, that I did have a problem accessing the Hago app with uh, my phone, a dedicated phone for live stream tours, uh, and that wasn't functioning. So I am using a different phone today. In fact, my personal phone uh, for this live stream, uh, but hopefully, that will not affect the quality of uh, the tour. All right, so uh, with that, let me begin. So uh, as I mentioned, my name is Imran. I am a tour guide here in Singapore, but I've not always been a tour guide. Uh, in fact, in my previous life, uh, I was a banker in the financial services industry, born in Pakistan, had the privilege and luxury of working and living in many different uh, environments, including the US, the UK, the Middle East, uh, and of course, uh, here in Singapore. I moved to Singapore in 1997, that's the last century. Uh, I don't want to date myself any further, but it was the last century, and this is home for me now. So, uh, hello everyone, and Leanne, glad you made it. So, <clears throat> what, what are we gonna do today? Well, Singapore's a little red dot. It's so tiny that if you open up Google Maps to Southeast Asia and just uh, want to check before I carry on, hopefully the sound and the video is okay for everyone. Can someone just give me a heads up, uh, a thumbs up, please? <clears throat> Great, thank you. All right, I'm a little concerned because I don't uh, normally use this dev device, excuse me, uh, for streaming, so. <clears throat> Now, Singapore is a little red dot, uh, and how little is it? As I mentioned, if you open up Google, uh, there's some static. I'm sorry about that. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's a problem with the app today. I couldn't access it uh, very easily. This is not my regular instrument for streaming. The, uh, my regular instrument couldn't even open the device, couldn't even open the app. So I do apologize for the static, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to bear with it. Uh, particularly when you stop looking at my face and hearing my voice and start seeing some of the sites. So it's so small uh, that uh, if you open up Google Maps to Southeast Asia, you will not even see Singapore. You have to magnify it many times before you even see Singapore, which is the little red dot. So small that from the east to the west, just one and a quarter marathons, that's it. If you're not so fit, you wanna build up to the marathon, go north to south, half a marathon. That's all it is. But within this small place, we have a very diverse population. We've had migrants coming to Singapore for 200 years. Uh, many of them came from China. Uh, <clears throat> many of them came from Southern India, uh, the Tamil Nadu province. Uh, and all of them found a home here. Now, as you all know, when migrants come, to a particular uh, place, city like Singapore, they bring with them not just uh, <clears throat> uh, their uh, clothes and the suitcases, uh, but they bring with them everything else with it, including their beliefs, their cultures, uh, I've, uh, and, and so many other things. And that is something that is reflected right here on this street, which is called Salok Ayer Street. Although it is a street in Singapore's Chinatown, one of the oldest streets in Singapore, uh, as we walk down the street, and we're only gonna walk down a certain portion of it, what we'll see is Singapore's religious diversity on display, because we're gonna see multiple places of worship, a church, 
a mosque, a Chinese temple, a Taoist temple, as well as a, a shrine dedicated to a Muslim Sufi saint. All that in about 800 meters and all that from the 1800s. So it's not been put up by the tourism board saying, okay, we want to show everyone how well we live together. No, uh, these uh, are uh, buildings that were put up by the communities themselves in the 1800s uh, to service and meet their own needs. Now, Talok Ayer means water bay in Chinese, and that's because in the past, you can see from the picture that I have put up, in the past, this is where Singapore's shoreline used to be. Many of the migrants who came to Singapore from southern China, the Fujian province, as well as from southern India, east southeast India, the Tamil Nadu area, uh, they really parked their vessels very close to the street. And many areas or, or one side of the street that I'll be walking on, that would be basically the beach. Uh, but of course, because of land reclamation that has taken place in Singapore since the uh, mid and late 1800s, today, this entire area is built up. And this street is nestled within the central business district and that means that it is a although the street itself is low rise all around us we're going to see tall uh, office blocks and uh, also in the hawker center we're going to see a very prominent hawker center selling street food we are going to witness some people having breakfast it is 8 30 in the morning over here the temperature is 84 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is a little bit lower than normal. Uh, normally when I give these tours in the morning, uh, it is close to 90%. We are in the mid 70s today. Hopefully it will not rain and the weather will hold up for us. Now, uh, let's uh, start uh, walking because you're probably tired of looking at me. So we're gonna start with this uh, small park that is here in the Talokaya area and around it as I pan across is you will see uh, the high-rise buildings associated with the uh, office uh, uh, office central business district that we have here. Uh, in front of you where these people are walking that is the exit to our local subway system uh, and as I just turn this corner you can probably see the beautiful heliconias uh, that uh, we find in these parks, the orange heliconias. You can see them here, uh, tropical uh, flower, or it's actually a ginger uh, <coughs> plant. And as I am walking through this park, maybe some of you can start to see the beginnings of a church ahead of you. And it has some unique features because this church, which is called the Chinese Methodist Church, uh, if you look at its roof, and let me uh, cut through here so that your image, your picture vision is not impaired by the roof here. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the Chinese Methodist Church built in the 18. Late 1800s, built by a missionary who came to Singapore all the way from Indiana in the US. Uh, his name was Dr. Benjamin West. He was a medical doctor and he was a little bit different from some of the uh, colonials who were coming in the 1800s over here. Why is that? Well, because he took the time and the effort to learn a little bit about the local community. He learned uh, Mandarin, the uh, local uh, Chinese tongue. He even learned a few of the dialect languages uh, that are spoken by the Chinese community. And also Malay, which was the lingua franca uh, at the time. And as a result, he did endear himself to the local community who were quite happy with his uh, work. He also uh, offered his services as a medical doctor for free to members of the local community. And that made a huge difference uh, to people because of course, 1800s, 
there's really no me medical facilities offered by the state. Uh, if you see the, the, the Chinese characters underneath the Chinese Methodist Church, that basically says God's house or God's prayer area. And let me show you an image of this church as it looked in the past. And you can see the very prominent Chinese style pagoda roof. All right. So <clears throat> as I continue the walk, look at what we're coming up. Of course, it seems just like concrete, but this is the beginning or the entrance to the Amoy Street Hawker Center. The Amoy Street Hawker Center is one of Singapore's most prominent hawker centers. Wait for it, wait for it. The food is going to show up. Here we go. There are over 100 food stalls available in this hawker center, all sold from the local community. And of course, some fusion food, from, which includes Western. Upstairs, there's even a Mexican stall that sells uh, localized burritos. Uh, so if you enjoy Mexican food, and I do from my time in LA, uh, you can try those. Uh, but one of the most uh, delicious stalls where I like to come is this one here. Uh, you can see Although it is a Malay stall, and in fact, my favorite dish here is this one, mi soto. Uh, although it is a Malay food stall, uh, it is got characteristics of Chinese food because a lot of noodles and also Indian in that a lot of curry uh, uh, is used and it is a little bit spicy as well. You can see the prices there. So $3.80 for Misoto, uh, that would work out to about $3.20 US. And that lets you know how reasonably priced street food or hawker food is Sing in Singapore is and why it is so popular among uh, people over here. In fact, most people will generally have four or five meals a week uh, in a place like this because most many homes in Singapore multi-generational which means that <clears throat> people have different work schedules as a result of which it's difficult to sign their meals and often there's really even no one to uh, to cook the meals so uh, it's not in some ways uh, this would be considered local fast food, but look at the line over here. Uh, you can see that sometimes it's not very fast because uh, when you do have a popular stall, the lines are long. So uh, this is a must-see in Singapore, the food. Must-try, I should say. On my left, a little bit of uh, street art mural. Uh, that is built here in the, is painted here in the Hawker Center. And let me show you, uh, if you can look closely, can you see there's an ACS uh, on the door and a seal? And that's because this area was also very popular, well not popular, this area was an area where the Methodist missionaries who came, and I referred to the Methodist Church and Dr. Benjamin West, well, they built a school called the Anglo-Chinese School, and it was in this area, ACS. And how about this lady? She's a Samsui woman, uh, one of the migrants who came from southern China. You can notice the red headdress. The red headdress is uh, something that distinguishes them. They came from a matriarchal society in southern China, and they basically did the same sort of hard work, uh, building roads, construction, basically labor that their male counterparts were doing. Now, if you weren't wondering 
where the name Hawker Center came from, this is probably a good place to explain it because you can see this gentleman. Uh, he is selling Malay food. We know he's Malay based on the, the clothes that he is wearing. And also underneath here is written Matan. Matan means food in Malay. Now, <clears throat> until the 1960s, stalls or hawkers like this, they would bicycle around or use push carts, travel around all of Singapore, uh, selling food from these carts push cars. As the 60s and 70s came around, uh, the government tried to improve the hygiene standards and it started to build custom areas for all these uh, stall owners to sell their food. So rather than having them move around the street, they would basically be shifted into areas such as this. So you can see Quite busy, a lot of activity, even though some of the stalls have not opened. And let's just quietly move around a few of them and you can take a look. Uh, and of course, this is a conversation here on this Hago tour. So please, uh, if you have comments, questions, anything, just uh, put it down in the chat. I'll be happy to uh, answer or take anything if I can't answer. I will, of course, check it out for you uh, in future tours. You can note some of the prices as well. If there are any vegetarians on the audience, I do apologize, but it's nice to be able to show uh, all the different types of food. Uh, Raymond, you asked, what is the typical breakfast for a local? Uh, there are several types. So in the first stall that I showed you, uh, I showed the one that I liked, I showed you a misoto. Next to it is a dish, an, another noodle dish called mirabus. Uh, that is something that is uh, quite common, but uh, it's roti prata that is the most common and in fact tomorrow morning same time uh, as today or tomorrow evening for you depending on where you are from uh, I will be doing a walk about little India and we will walk through a hawker center which is famous for its uh, roti prata so you can actually see them making that tomorrow uh, if you join same time different place same city, however. All right, let me take you to one more lane. Remember, there are over 100 stalls here. And let me show you something that is not so common in urbanized Singapore. Look at what we have here. We have our local roosters. Uh, they are quite common to see in the mornings. They do live in the park where we join. Singapore is highly urbanized, uh, yet we have pockets of these uh, uh, animals pretty much everywhere. Otters are something that you can see around Marina Bay, uh, and of course, lots of other uh, animals like squirrels and things. Now, I brought you to this stall here. Uh, Hainanese chicken rice because chicken rice is like the unofficial national dish of uh, Singapore. It's basically, you can think of it as poached rice, cucumbers served with chili sauce, uh, and the rice is often cooked in or boiled in water that has been used to uh, cook the chicken as well. Uh, Robert, you asked, uh, is not the norm for family to eat dinner together. Of course, the attempt is to try and eat dinner together, but it's not very uh, common or possible uh, during the week, during the working week, because uh, of the fact that most people are working. As a result of which, uh, family dinners uh, become very important, particularly on festivals like Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, uh, and other festivals, and even over the weekends. 
right? So this is the name of the street here, the Lokaya Street. Now again, you might think Singapore is highly modern, urbanized, but look, we have our cobblers as well, uh, still operating and plying on this street. So we are going to continue to walk down the street because now we have hit uh, the Lokaya Street proper. And now please start noticing the architecture as well. The architecture, particularly the shop houses. Shop houses are very common in Southeast Asia. Let me see if I can cross the road here. <coughs> All right, there we go. Shop houses, very common in Southeast Asia. Uh, and they basically mean that at the street level, you had historically the shop or the warehouse and the upper level or levels you had the family living if they were big enough and you had uh, enough space sometimes even workers living and these shop houses like the one that you're seeing here uh, this one uh, these would be from the 1930s pre-war but note how nicely and ornately done the columns uh, and some of the other features are uh, as well as the French windows. You might also notice the green bamboo here. That's of course not real bamboo, but it signifies the fact that uh, in Singapore, <coughs> our ethnic diversity is also uh, quite uh, something. Let me put that up for you. So you can see the fact that it is basically a Chinese city-state. 75% of the population is Chinese. When I say Chinese, I don't mean associated with China. I mean ethnically. Uh, because, of course, Singapore's independent has developed its own independent culture uh, over the last several hundred years. And in many ways, its history and culture is linked more with the Malay Peninsula than it is with mainland China. That has had a huge impact, not just on uh, the culture, uh, but uh, also uh, to simple things like language, uh, etc. This is our first national monument in the tour. You won't even be able to tell it's a mosque except for the fact that these faux minarets, fake minarets, because they're purely cosmetic, have a crescent and star at the top. And of course, it's written there, Al-Abrar Mosque. So this is a mosque. It's basically just a shop house that has been converted into a mosque. The mosque started in the 1800s and uh, became this structure much, much later. But it has been a mosque or prayer area for Muslims uh, from the early 1800s. And from where I stand, if I just span a little bit further down, you might even be able to start to see the Chinese temple as I walk further down the street. And so that shows you how close these different places of worship are. That's a reflection also of Singapore's religious diversity. I put up a slide there you can see how diverse Singapore is religiously. In fact, even if you add the Buddhists and the Taoists together, uh, they still don't constitute more than, uh, they're still less than 50%. And uh, it is uh, something that really has built itself into the culture here. Let me walk closer to the Chinese temple. Any comments, questions from people so far? Hopefully the video and audio is holding up okay. I do want to show you some of the designs on the... This is not even the main door. Uh, and you can see we have this design here. 
uh, and also take a look at some of these carvings. I'm going to take you inside this temple as well. These are door gods. They are there to protect the door. And some more, one more uh, stone carving. Let me take it vertical for you. So in case uh, you want to take a postcard vertically, all right? One, two, three. All right, I'm going to turn it back horizontal. One, two, three. And let's continue further down uh, because I want to take you inside the temple, but I also want to give you a nice shot of the temple from the outside. So let's see if we can safely cross this road. It's a narrow road, very busy. Now, once I cross over, as I am, this area uh, of the street would basically have waves lapping on my feet. And that's how close we were to the sea. And here we have the Temple of Heavenly Happiness. It's a little bit, lighting is not great, but you can see the dancing dragons on the roof, the curved roofs, which are representative of Southern Chinese architectural style. All right, so, what I'm going to do now is, if you don't mind, I'm going to just place the gimbal on a table, put on my face mask, so that I can take you inside the temple. If you're into cars, you may have seen that uh, what looked like a Maserati to me. I'm not a car buff, so uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to set the gimbal down, put on my mask so that we can go inside uh, and see a closer view because there are many beautiful works in there. All right. Okay. So let's go. See if we can get, show you some nice views of the temple and the craftsmanship, which was done primarily by craftsmen from southern China. the intricate dragons and the intricate figures. You see these uh, animals here. Any guesses what those might be? This one here. We're going to go in there in just a second. 
but I do want to focus a little bit more on some of the work, which is so amazing, uh, that we have at the entrance. Hi, Katie. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, and for those voyagers who may have joined midstream, welcome. Uh, we are at the Temple of Heavenly Happiness or Sian Hock Keng Temple in Singapore. And also be aware that I had a problem uh, accessing Hago this morning. So this is not my normal streaming device. This is another device, but hopefully you are able to still have a high quality experience. It must have taken hours and hours of painstaking work to create some of these carvings. This flat here, it is the name of the temple, the temple of heavenly happiness. And you can see it is encircled by two dragons. Dragons are very much considered regal royal animals. They are seen as mediators or uh, interconnectors between the earth and the heavenly realm. And as I bring my camera down, this is the view from the main entrance of the temple. This is the courtyard, the main courtyard behind the urn where you see all the red lanterns. That is where the main deity is. This is a Taoist temple. And the main deity is the goddess of the sea. And you can understand why, given that many of the Chinese migrants who came to Singapore, when they landed in Singapore, they landed close to this temple, walked inland, then came in and gave thanks to the goddess of the sea for protecting them on their journey. And these, of course, at the main entrance are the two guardian lions, a male and a female. All right, so let us go inside the temple. I can't take you much further in here because photography and videography is not allowed beyond a certain point. However, let me show you some beautiful views, sorry about that, of the, the temple roof there. And bring it down, the urn. Uh, Sharon, no, in fact, as I mentioned in Singapore, it's very common for these sort of temples to have both Buddhist and Taoist deities. So uh, while this is a Taoist temple, uh, I will also show you that one of the main deities housed in this temple is Guanin, who is very, very uh, famous or popular among Buddhist deities. Uh, and she is often referred to as the goddess of mercy. So in Singapore, basically the temples are often blended between Taoist and Buddhist temples. And we even have Confucius in this temple. And I'll show you Confucius later. He is very popular with students and academics. Maybe some of you can see the drum at the back here. That drum is still used in special occasions. All right.
right, let's take a walk around here to the left. And we have another courtyard, another urn, and more deities. Now, this deity is known to be popular with civil servants and public officials because uh, he represented uh, someone who was a very benevolent ruler. And this is a very, very unique, unusual se uh, section because if you look at these tablets in the glass cases at the back, they're essentially tombstones because these tablets represent individuals who have passed on. And in the tradition of filial piety that is encouraged in Taoist practices as well as Chinese uh, traditions, people will come here to pray to their ancestors, to pray for their soul, to pray that they have a comfortable afterlife. Thank you, Katie. So this is where we have walked down the left courtyard. Yeah, Ronnie, it's a wonderful, wonderful temple, this one. And it is, along with the food in the Hawker Center, very much a highlight of this tour. There's one other beautiful structure that we're going to see after this, but let's focus on what we have here. And so we were uh, talking about the Buddhists and Buddhist belief. This is Guanin, goddess of mercy. And she is a Buddhist deity. So while the main deity here is Mazu, and let me see if I can give you a shot of her. I can't go in too close, but uh, I'll turn it vertical. So one, two, three. And So it's a Buddhist deity, the goddess of mercy. And I'm going to go back to horizontal in one, two, three. All right, and let's carry on because there's one other main deity and that is in the final courtyard here. And that deity is Confucius, who I mentioned is very popular with academics and students. So uh, before an exam, before a test, it's very common to see uh, students come here and seek his blessings for All right, Confucius, and then we're coming out to the, thank you, Pam, coming out to back to where we started, but I do want to show you some nice, a nice, beautiful view of the main courtyard through these doors. And with the 
the Golga at the back. Hopefully people are able to get some decent postcards. And this is where Marzu, the goddess of the seas, the main deity where she is located. I cannot take you closer as it's not permitted, but take a view. And let me take it vertical in one, two, three. And you can see someone is burning incense stick. The idea behind the incense stick is as the smoke rises to the sky, the prayers of the individuals go up to the heavens, carrying your prayers to the uh, person, your ancestors above. And going back to horizontal, so one, two, three. And before we exit the temple, thank you very much, Sharon. Before we exit the temple, take a look at the door gods. So I think of them almost like TSA agents because this is the side door and they are meant to protect the, the, the temple from evil. I'm gonna take it horizontal, uh, vertical again. So one, two, three. Thank you, Ronnie. Because these individuals, these door gods, door generals, they protect the temple. They stop evil from coming in. And there's one on each door. You can see they're quite fierce. And they need to be if they are to keep evil out of the temple. I'm going to keep it vertical for a little bit longer because I do want to show you at the main entrance, the entrance for the royals and the nobilities. They are not greeted by door gods, but by a dragon. And in fact, this dragon is a five floored dragon. All right, I'm going to turn it around to horizontal again in one, two, three. All right. Uh, so if you look at the claws here, uh, the claw here, five claws, that means it is a royal dragon. If I were to ask a Chinese craftsman to paint a dragon for me on my front door, he'll probably only put four claws because I'm just a commoner, right? So thank you very much, Raymond. Let us step out of the temple again. And right next to this temple, sharing a boundary wall is another small Taoist temple. This temple that we are leaving, the Theon Hokkien Temple, is from the 1820s, but the structure that we saw uh, was completed in 1840s. All right, so this is the small Taoist temple next door. Notice the old stove here. <clears throat> I think we, if you don't mind, uh, just give me a second. I think there's something may have come onto the camera lens. Let me just clean it. I'm sorry about the inconvenience. Let me just clean it. Sorry about that. But it seemed like something had come and it was a little bit blurry. So if we see this 
stove, this old fashioned stove, this is where many of the uh, members, uh, the believers will burn items to send up to their ancestors to have them lead a comfortable life. This temple is also Southern Chinese. I'm going to show it to you from the roof. So you can see the dancing dragons, the pearls. And then as I come down, it's dedicated to the heavenly Jade Emperor. And you can see the name there, the Yu Huang Gong Temple. And what do people burn to make life for their ancestors more comfortable? I'll just show you. But in case you're wondering, we have four official languages in Singapore. English being the universal language. So that is the one on the top. Mandarin, the second one. Malay, third. And right at the bottom, we have Tamil, which is also an official language. English is used for education from primary all the way up to tertiary education, but people are also taught their mother tongue, one of the other three, or indeed another language, which could be Thai, Vietnamese, etc. So, <clears throat> part of gold, you can buy it, burn it in the stove, send the gold up to your ancestors, Joss papers, and you can see there's even food in there. And of course, something for every budget. So all these items are here to be burnt in that stove, which I showed you earlier. Here it is, so that they are sent across to your ancestors and they can lead a more comfortable life. Now, from where I stand in front of this temple, you can already begin to see the boundary wall of our last structure, which is the Nagore Durga. Let me take you closer. You can see it here. I'll give you some nice shots of that, but before that, let me turn around and give you a photo of the pagoda of the Yu Huan Gong temple, which is a very nice shot. I'm going to take it vertical now. So one, two, three. How's that? Hopefully some people are getting decent shots and back to horizontal. So one, two, three. So if you are just joining us, thank you Voyagers for joining us. This is Singapore's Salok Ayer Street. We have just left a Taoist temple and <clears throat> this is the street that we have walked down, which is called Water Bay. What you are seeing now where the cars are parked, this was the original shoreline of Singapore. Uh, that is where the water used to come to until land reclamation took place, some shop houses, and finally we are on to our last place of worship, which is a shrine dedicated to a Indian Muslim saint. The shrine is called the Nagore Darga. Today it's a museum called the Indian Muslim Heritage Center. It's dedicated to the <clears throat> to showcase the achievements and contributions of Singapore's Indian Muslim community. And let's see if I can give you some nice shots of the Darga. So this shrine. was built by Indian Muslims who came to Singapore from the Tamil Nadu coastal town of Nagore. And I'm going to give you a better 
Instagrammable shot, hopefully, of this temple, the shrine, not temple, shrine. All right, so here we have it. Hopefully that is a better shot for you. A little bit of history about this shrine. There was a 16th century Sufi saint who is buried in an Indian fort town called Nagor. Darga means shrine. So Nagor Darga is dedicated to the Sufi saint who is buried in Nagor. His name was Shaul Hamid. He's a 16th century saint believed to have died around 1570. And he had a special relationship with fishermen and sailors. Remember Nagore Port Town, 16th century, uh, boats and ships are not what they are today. People almost took their lives into their hands when they went out fishing. So people thought that he protected them during their forays out into the sea and also gave them bountiful harvests. So when many of these migrants from southern India came to Singapore uh, in the 1800s, they believed that this saint, Shaul Hamid, he helped to protect them during their dangerous journey to Singapore. And what did they do? Well, they built a shrine dedicated to the saint. And it wasn't just any shrine, because it was, in fact, a replica of the shrine where he is buried in India. So I have put that up there for you. On one side, we have the original shrine where he's buried, which is located in the port town of Nador. On the other side, you have the copy or the replica, which is a slightly smaller version of the one we have here in Singapore. So that basically is why we have a shrine dedicated to a Sufi saint here. We have an Indian Muslim mosque, which is the first structure that we saw, or rather the second one. We saw the Chinese Methodist Church, uh, which is where Dr. Benjamin West and many other uh, Methodist missionaries, primarily from the US, came, even set up schools. I mentioned the Anglo-Chinese school, which is located in this neighborhood. And then uh, we saw the very beautiful Tian Hokang Temple with all its magnificent uh, craftsmanship, which I tried to show you in some detail. Uh, as I walk through it, including the door guards, the woodwork, the gold paint, and so on, and then the Taoist temple. So uh, that basically reflects Singapore's religious diversity. And as we were walking through the Hawker Center, remember right at the beginning, the food, that represents the kind of ethnic and cultural diversity in the population because of the different types of food that we have here. Now, if you're interested in food and more about Singapore's culture, tomorrow at the same time, which is 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Daylight Time, I will be doing a tour of uh, Singapore's Little India region, where we will also be going through one of Singapore's most famous hawker centers, as well as ending up in a uh, Hindu temple, one of the oldest Hindu temples that we have here with a beautiful pagoda or gopuram as we call it. So please do and try and join me for that. I think I missed a comment from Katie. Uh, yes, I will be repeating it and hopefully uh, I will catch you on that tour in the next time. Uh, so for all of you voyagers, old and new, Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, join me on this tour today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was not too much uh, information overload for you. I do enjoy talking and sharing all this uh, information about Singapore. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> if you enjoyed it, please do leave a review 
uh, on it. And if you can, a uh, tip will be much appreciated. It will help me to continue to put out more content on the Hago platform. So thank you very much. If there are any last minute questions, comments, uh, I'll be happy to take them now. I've also put up a slide there, which has some contact information for me. So in case you want to get in touch with me offline, please feel free to do so. Uh, don't worry, you no obligations for tours. You can always just contact me uh, if you have questions about Singapore. Maybe you're moving here. Uh, you enjoyed uh, seeing uh, so much what you saw. You want to come and get a job. Google just expanded, bought a new, uh, is setting up a new data center here. Amazon has recently in the last nine months taken an additional four floors in a, a building in the uh, business district that we are here in, which is good news for us because banks have all seemed to be uh, giving up space, going into work from home a little bit more. So uh, we don't want too many empty office buildings here. But anyway, so I wanna thank all of you again for the time. And then I will hopefully see some of you at least tomorrow, same time, same city, different place little india all right so take care and see you soon bye